and Florian Models Friday show. This show we have a look back over the week, see what we've been getting up to. And to be honest, we've been really pushing on with this guy who's really looking the part now. Thank you for all the kind feedback on it. Um, as I said in one of the posts I tweeted up this week, uh, the light is at the end of the tunnel and it really is with this one, I must admit. It's one of those things where you take on a project like this and you have it in your mind it's going to be this this and this actually it is a lot more some of it is my own making so i've been doing more work than originally anticipated with this particular build but in some ways it's really uh, paid off in a lot of ways certainly the one i'm most happy with is my finish on the actual paintwork um, it, i gave it actually a very light buff We'll say buff sand i suppose you'd call it with a little bit of a coarse um uh, sanding sponge just to knock it back a little bit but what it's actually done is given the paintwork like a polished effect with scratches in it which actually looks very very realistic the paintwork looks heavier and thicker than it really is technically it's a very thin coat over this but by do giving it this polished effect it just makes it sort of tonal it's got blotches to it it is very reminiscent of the real thing and something that i haven't had had work as well in the past. I've done it in the past and we've polished models and especially black work as well. If you have a look back on the Halifax, we showed how to give a better weathered look to black work by physically sanding it and polishing it. This has done something very similar, but the way it's done it, it's just been so much better. Now, I'm not sure it's obviously we're using MRP paints with this one, so it's got guns underneath, but it's MRP on top if that's what it's doing it, but it has that real sort of tonal look to it. But anyway, the big thing this week was really pushing on with it and getting it through. Really, really happy. I'll have this thing knocked out by next week and then we can push on with other things. So very, very happy with that. Anyway, this week, Monday was part 10. And in part 10, basically we would put on the uh, dark ghost gray on the outside here that doesn't look that dark, but trust me, it is. Um, but going in through that one, and then obviously we're using Ron's masks for doing all of this, because apart from the stars and bars uh, on the wings, uh, everything else is actually been uh, painted on. So we used his fantastic masks, uh, masks uh, going through the motions of doing it, showing how to do it, because obviously it is this thing, you want to line it up. So to get the centers of letters in there, like the center of the A and the R, things like that, down here on the back. So, you know, Fs and Cs you're not really worried about, but to keep it all perfectly lined up by using the tape, putting it on and going through the motions of doing that with it. So that went on really, really well. Very happy with how the sort of, you know, the stencil data went in, the markings on the tail, everything else like that worked really well. The face and the mask, we did a little bit afterwards, but really we worked through on that one, okay? Again, if you've never used masks before, it's one of those things where you just have to set Take a little bit of a step back. How is it you're going to use it? How are you going to get into it? And I'm a great believer in doing the easiest way possible. To be honest, that is the easiest way because you have no silvering. You don't have to worry about it at all. And hopefully I'm going to do a lot more projects in the future which are going to be using masks because they are just so easy to use and going through with them. So a bit easier than using decals. Uh, the other thing we spoke about this week on Monday was we were talking about image hosting on the Florian Model site. Now I've had a look on here just before we actually came on air to record this and it looks like we're like 50-50 split at the moment with 50% if you want to use it, 50% don't want to use it. Like I said before, it's not going to be compulsory or anything else like that. It's literally just going to be that thing where perhaps if you don't have a Photobucket account and you don't have a Flickr account and all the other ones that and you want to use it, you'll be able to use it. Now I'm still in talks with the actual company who host our forum about an unlimited version uh, how much that's going to cost us and everything else like I said before as well it's not going to affect you I'm not going to put up subscriptions because of it it will just be something if you want to use it you can use it if you don't you don't it's just that I need to make sure with the hosting company that if you put an image up there it's going to stay there and not down the line it's going to drop out or disappear or anything else like that okay but I just thought it'd be a handy little tool for the people who don't use it that you can use it okay so it's just something there if you want to use it i know a lot of you obviously post in other people's forums and stuff like that and you're not going to want to do it our way because you won't be able to post it anywhere else it is literally a one-click system it asks you if you want to put up a photo you go add image you can put the image up it's one click and it does it and that's how it will take it from whatever source you're on and it will put it up there it resizes does everything for you it is simple as that but i know a lot of you guys might want to have bigger pictures or smaller ones and various things you're not going to have any of that it's literally going to be a one click put your photo up it's going to put it up in around about 600 uh, pixel uh, size which is about what we use in our forum anyway uh, i think so anyway the system is it's been tested it works it works absolutely great but i'm just waiting to hear back from the host company how much it's physically going to cost if it's realistic then we'll do it okay if it's something stupid money then obviously we won't 
So anyway, really that was my idea of speaking about it. A load of feedback on for you guys. And again, it, it's one of those things where, you know, the guys who use Photo Bucket, and like myself and Hans and a lot of you, I've never had a problem with it. I must admit, I do pay for it. I paid the small one. It's what they call the 20 series um, and everything else. It gives you, I think, it, I don't know what it is, something like, 20 gig or something in there uh, and I'm only halfway through it and I've been uploading there since 2002 um, so that's not a problem it, it does give you a lot of options uh, but I know a lot of you do have problems and you do struggle with it so that's why I did bring it up uh, Tuesday, Hans's paint tutorial. Loads of feedback on that. I know he's loving doing it and all the rest of it. Yes, obviously, I know a lot of you have said Could the focusing of the camera. Don't forget, Hans is learning all of this. And obviously, I've advised him on various things about it, on how to get your best ways of doing it. But I'm also a great believer in the guys will do produce the videos how they want to do it. I'm not going to sit here and almost put them into my studio and be a mirror of me because that's not what we're about. We want them to show it in their way of their styling. Okay, so I want you to see exactly how they go about doing it and then that way they can pass on their tips and tricks to you in a completely different format to me okay so obviously you've been watching me for the last near on 20 years doing this okay but I'd say when you're looking at Hans and doing things like that with it you can see exactly how he goes about it and the same works with Steve as well so as you say they're still finding their feet they're understanding it obviously it takes a lot of different work when you're having to edit and do the various things to it as well okay of having a camera and knowing you need to be in focus and trying to show the camera as well as you doing it as well is definitely an art form but I know loads of you are enjoying it I love enjoying watching him as well of going through the things of it so that was up on Tuesday what we're going to do as well I've been speaking to Hans about it yesterday I've got a meeting with the guys we're going to have a Skype sort of team meet on Sunday uh, we're going to knock out a few ideas to have uh, specific areas so you'll be able to see Hans's work in a specific area perhaps see Steve's in a specific area and then they'll link them into their builds as they're doing them on the forum as well which is something we're all going to do because of my next build onwards I'm going to have mine integrated into the forum as well so you will see my build the videos the stills from it and everything all in one place on the forum as well as the main site so it just makes commenting for you guys on the forum easier to get to me directly and you can comment as we make our way through something I used to do years ago and then I stopped doing it and I'm not sure why but uh, anyway so we're going to sort of integrate that back so I know Hans wants to push on he's got a lot to show you uh, the various builds he's making his way through and things like that but say so I'm going to have a guy, work with the guys on Sunday we'll hopefully get everything sorted out uh, and into a position where from next week onwards we can get, get them up as soon as really the guys want to put them up um, so that was that one. Also, we had the review of Deluxe Materials Plastic Magic. And like I said in the review, and it's amazing, I'm sure a lot of you don't actually watch the review. Trust me, watch the review because I explain everything. Like I said, I don't think this replaces extra thin where is my extra thin okay and i don't think it replaces my white top cement which is great for doing the bigger jobs okay and it's not obviously as quick drying as the old um quick drying extra thing so i have that as well trust me a lot of you guys say you ought to test i have them all trust me uh, but the thing is is that i think it definitely has its place for a glue because as i say it doesn't dry as quick as um, obviously the extra thin or the quick drying stuff and it's not obviously as slow as using Tamiya's normal resin cement but it's definitely worked really well on here and something I do like about it which I think you do have to take into account the extra thin and the quick drying extra thin as that weld action capability melts plastic a little bit hotter action than I think the actual deluxe materials I've had less um, seam joining and stuff to do with using deluxe materials and somebody mentioned in there about uh, if you're using it on a good kit with no seam lines trust me this isn't this I've had issues with this all over this kit if you've been following the build but I've used exclusively this glue doing this entire one it's not used anybody else's just so I get a proper use of it to see what it actually does and actually i do like it I, you know it's never going to replace these two extra things because for capillary action those are great you touch it goes off this is just as good but not quite it's not quite you know it's not got that finesse of extra thin but i do prefer the brush and i do like it and i to be honest i know it's going to sound bad heretic get the flaming crosses out but i can actually see myself switching to this permanently because i do prefer it i think over extra thin but i know but i tell you what's really funny, because we often get asked about smelliness of glues. Uh, a lot of people say about, do they stink and stuff? I actually opened this up to just, when we were talking about it, doing the review. And obviously I haven't used this glue now in over a month. And boy, does it smell strong. 
personally, I think it's no difference. It's just, you know, my nose has sort of become immune to extra thin over the years, and now I'm using something else, and you come back to it and think, cracky, that is really strong. But it probably, this could be as strong. It's just a different way of doing it. But anyway, we had the review of that. Thanks, great feedback from everybody on there. Wednesday, Tackham, what have I done with it? Oh, what have I done with it, actually? Ah, right, here it is. We had the review for this bad boy, and as I mentioned on uh, Tuesday's blog, God, everybody's an expert, aren't they? Apart from me, I know nothing about this whatsoever. Thank you so much for all the kind feedback onto it. Thank you so much for all the reference material on it and everything like that, because you guys have jumped on this one really, really heavy and sent me loads of good quality information uh, about obviously the Zimmeret on this one and how the, all the Porsche turrets had Zimmeret with no exception, because they were all pre-done before the actual the rest of the vehicle was ready, and then it was all done to the standard. So when we do get around to doing this one, which we are going to be doing it in a month or two's time, we will be doing the Zimmer on this one and going through the motions. And again, loads of you have sent me various different tools and techniques and the Tamiya stuff, the photo etch stuff, and everything for doing Zimmer on armor i don't know i might just have a go because i've never done it before and i quite fancy having a bit of a stab at it but like i explained on this one this one's going to be more about the interior i'm more excited about the interior than the exterior on this thing purely because it does come with a full interior loads of you have commented on that you're building it that you're working on it you love it it's a great kit it's not perfect you know a lot of you are saying there's some little errors on it and stuff like that but that's really rivet counting from a kit point of view it's really really nice and it goes together very very well there's a couple of little tweaks on it but apart from that, it is a lovely kit. So thank you for the, all the feedback on that one. As I said, loads and loads of emails I actually had on that one. So that was Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, part 11 on this guy. And literally, it was all about the face. All about the face. No. Uh, so basically, as we know, we're using Ron's masks for this one. You've seen the video on it, no doubt, by now. Uh, so it's using it in anger. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some stills off of it and link them to the uh, actual part of it. This face system on here, again, it's not asymmetrical as in because the gun is offset to one side. And what we did was take one side and flip it. Technically, that was a slight error because the gun is off to one side. So it screwed up. So what I had to do down here on the front is paint in by hand the front, join it up and everything else. And we used a couple of teeth. I remasked and used the teeth off of it. But I have to say it has worked an absolute treat. It worked better than I could ever have hoped. And again, it's one of those things that it also adds to the depth to the model because obviously the bit where we were like taking the tape off, you scratch the paintwork, you see the black through, it looks like it's had a chip or a scratch or something else. So actually it worked really, really well. So I'm really happy of how all of this one's come through. I know loads of you have sent me photos on the nose of this. Trust me, I've done my research on it. There's some of them that don't have the flared nostril, some do, some have a slightly different nose. They're all a little bit different around here on the front. And obviously they've been doing this particular face on this for quite a while now in different versions. So I've got like 10 different photos and it's 10 different types of front on there and everything else. The eyes in slightly different position, the ears, the teeth, the tusks, and then obviously the nose is quite a big thing on it. But generally, this part uh, 11 was just all about this. So we were just talking about how you go about it, putting it down, peeling it off, doing it in the different layers, and putting it on there. So a massive thank you to Ron for doing this for me, because actually, I love it. I absolutely love it. And I must admit, the couple of people we've had in here this week in the studio, they've all seen it and gone, wow, that looks really, really nice. Because it actually does look like it's a decal. You would never know it's actually all just been sprayed on and everything. But the great thing again, the zero carrier film, and it just blends in. It blends in beautifully with its surrounding, its weathering and everything else, just like the real thing. So it's not like an afterthought that's been stuck on, being painted on. It just gives it that the heavier, more realistic effect and everything else like that. And those little imperfections we had on one side and we hand painted them in have blended in beautifully now and you wouldn't even know they're on there. But generally, as you can see, it's coming to life now. It's really looking the part. And then we got the gear on, uh, obviously on uh, Thursday when I was working on it and stuff. So next week, there's gonna be another three parts of this up next week. So Monday, you're gonna get a part. Wednesday, you're gonna get a part. Possibly Thursday, you're gonna get another part as well of actually running through this one, of putting all the details in there. But again, it's been a lot of fun. I really have enjoyed working on this kit and I'm going to be really, really sad when it comes to an end. So that was this week. Very busy. So up with you today, we've got Steve. Now Steve's obviously working on exactly the same aircraft as me, but he's doing it completely different way. So his types of weathering and mine, again, 
I think because he's more of an armor guy, he's gone more from the armor thing, but he has this unique ability of weathering down using oils. Uh, and he's gonna be doing this one on his, and it is gonna look absolutely stunning. So if anyone saw his tornado that he did, that looked absolutely amazing. So his is gonna look absolutely beautiful and probably better than mine. But anyway, he's gonna talk you through doing post shading. So his post shading technique, again, is totally different to mine, which is really nice. So you can see different ways of doing it and seeing how it goes through the motions of doing it. So with his especially, He's going to be showing you how he goes right the way through the motions. Nice close-up camera again. Steve's new to doing video work, so as you said, sometimes you get some focus problems and stuff. We're all guilty of it. I even get it still now. So again, but it's the overall opinion, as you can see exactly how he goes through the motions of going through, of post-shading, the different colors he's using, the techniques, how close he is, and the patterns he uses and stuff like that, which is great, because again, it's not the same as what you see me do. Okay, so it is that thing different guy, different ways of doing it. And like I say, with all this hobby, there is no right way. Anybody who tells me you should be doing it this way is wrong because everybody finds their own way of doing it. And like as Steve has said, he learned a lot from me in the early days, but Steve spraying is nothing like me. So again, it's a nice to show you guys that there is no right and wrong. It's just your way of doing it. And that is the great thing with it. Uh, also, we've got a couple of things we've got to talk about in the forum at the moment uh, with the group builds and stuff that's going on. So uh, this week we've actually got, um, well, actually next week, starting up, which is the Easter egg one. Yes, it's that time of year again. It's going to start on March the 18th. It's going to run to April the 16th. It's the Easter one. So basically it's all egg plane related type things. Now we know Meng's brought some things out. Well, it seems like everybody has. Obviously the Hasegawa egg planes, that's how it started. Loads of scratch building, the usual fun and games. It's going to last a month there's no prizes or anything in we always have a little video review of it uh, and things like that for a reveal but generally that's what that one is so that one's going to be starting up very very soon the ones we got going on at the moment is obviously the hog one. You've got until the 21st of May for that one. So you've got quite a bit of time to finish off all your hogs and all your ground attack aircraft. It's the Waltz and all one, so it's helicopters, ground attack, anything that's subsonic, you can go in for that one. It's just a group build, so there is no medals and things like that going on there. Uh, the uh, proper group build that's going on at the moment is obviously the uh, fire at will, the I must be German one. That one is going to finish on the 2nd of July, so you've still got plenty of time on that one. So I've really got to get my finger out if I'm going to do a King Tiger overnight and an ME262 for that one. Hmm. Um, so anyway, I will push on with those. We'll get them through quicker than you can shake a stick at. So anyway, you've got plenty of time on that one. And that's quite good at the moment because we've got 260 entered into that one and we've got 44 completed already. So congratulations to everybody doing on those. Uh, the next ones we've got coming up for the uh, AFV guys uh, for the SIG, again, there's no medal on this one, is the uh, Ming the Merciless or Ming the Merciless as it actually is pronounced. That's going to run from the 1st of April uh, to the 23rd of July. And as the name would depict, if it's made by Ming or Ming or whatever you want to pronounce it, it qualifies. So you can enter any of their kits into that particular SIG. Really good one with that one. And so we've done it in the past with Tamiya and other companies, uh, and we just love the way they work. So that one is going to run from the 1st of April to the 23rd of July. So you've still got loads and loads of time on that one. Uh, all the medals and everything has been sent out. I know some of you haven't got them yet, as I explained, because we had a real delay getting our orders uh, last week. The medals were being put in amongst with them and they were going out um, in sort of dribs and drabs, in sort of like 25 each day, stuff like that. So some of them obviously were held back as they were making their way out. But all the medals have been shipped. If you sent me your address, your medal has gone out. If you haven't sent me your address yet, send me your address. As I said, I think we've only got four people haven't now. Uh, and what I would do is if I haven't heard of you by the weekend, I will shoot you a message on Sunday, something else like that, just to try and get your address from me, because obviously you'll be getting a medal uh, and things like that. And that is this week in modeling here at Flory Models. Again, busy week. Uh, next week, we've got loads of stuff coming up for you. I'm hoping that Hans and Steve are gonna do a little something for you as well. From my point of view, it's all gonna be the last push on the A10, getting this one together. Loads of parts are going to be coming up with you because obviously you're playing a little bit of catch up. Uh, today, to be honest, I've been doing the seat. Uh, so we've done the seat and the cockpit. I'm working on all of that. As soon as that's done, we're going to put on all the aerials, all the little bits and pieces underneath it. And then we can work. The last two things are going to be on the bays for this one. Weapons fit and it will be done. So by the end of next week, this one will be completely finished. Well off track because I had every intention of having this thing done months ago, literally. Uh, but um, we will get it done by the end of the month. I can promise you that. And then obviously we're going to be working 
Neon King Tiger and the ME262, but before both of those, I'm gonna be doing Eddard's Rebox of the Hasegawa Skyhawk, the A4, because it's a lovely little kit and it's what I call a mojo builder. So when you come off the back of doing something big and heavy and a slow project, you can just do a quick one which you can put together in a couple of days uh, and get it finished within a week. Uh, it's quite a nice one to get the old mojo back and everything else like that. So there we go, that's it from me. Thanks for watching this week. And as ever, I'm gonna leave you from your great work that you completed in the gallery. So until next week, everybody, happy modeling, take care. Faces prolong the embraces